I grew up, my, um, my father was a contractor in construction, um, so we had always kind of grown up learning how to build things and, you know, tools and, and everything. So, you know, at that point, um, after, uh, I, did, I did a bit of ceramics before I came to college too, uh, so I was familiar with that as well as, you know, my sister was also uh, pretty deep into it at that point. She played around a lot, so a little influence there. But um, after I came here and after I decided that art was the way to go, um, sort of ceramics and sculpture just fell into place because uh, building with my hands was you know, what I do best, and so I kind of stuck with that at that point. Ben introduced to me a couple different ways, um, because my sister-in-law works for SUNY Cortland also, and she knows she had worked with Peter before. Okay. And uh, I kind of came up because Peter had mentioned in a conference, you know, that they were looking to put a dragon on campus. And she had mentioned to him at that point, well, hey, my brother-in-law is a sculptor, like he could be perfect for this. So she gave Peter some pictures, uh, and then it was probably a month or so, and Peter contacted me to see if we wanted to, to meet about possibly, you know, putting a dragon on campus. We did a little, we, we stuck pretty close to the logo for this one. Um, there were, the issues with the logo were, of course, that it was two-dimensional, not three-dimensional. So there's certain aspects of the logo that work really well in two-dimension that would not work really well in three-dimension, so we discussed that a lot. Um, and we changed some of the d design, uh, like some of like the wings and the stance of it, and you know some of the other parts of the dragon, to accommodate for uh, the three dimensionality of things. Um, and then, you know, a lot of it when when I do a commission work where someone's looking for something specific, it's kind of my goal to make sure that they're happy, you know, with what it is. Um, so, m my decisions as an artist they tend to come in towards the end, and they come in during fabrication. Um, when I run into something where I say, oh, well, you know, this just isn't gonna work like this, it's yeah. not gonna look like this, you know? And so, which, which all becomes an aesthetic decision based on, you know, what the original design was compared to, you know, what it, what is possible for it to do, and then I try to meet the middle somewhere to keep it as close as I can. Um, but it's still allowing for, you know, the physical nature of, of how things are put together. You know, it did, it definitely meant something to me, because at that point when you're an artist, it's, depending on the success of your field, you know, and how well you're doing in your field, and whether you are mainstream New York artists, or, you know, you're kind of a local crafts person or whatever, you know, it was, it was always a way, you know, in my thinking, it was hard to be like, you know, well, how do you give back to, you know, the schools that you've gone to as, as far as you've gone? Because, you know, monetarily it doesn't always work, you know, and as such is life. But uh, when I was first started talking to Peter about this, you know, I thought it was an incredible opportunity for me to be able to do something for the school that, you know, basically gave me my start, you know, to where I am now. And so, when this came up, I kind of jumped on it and said, "Yeah, this would I would love to do this. You know, this is a perfect way for me to give something back, you know, to the school, and you know, also having um, a permanent public sculpture is another big perk, and you know, something that the community and and the school can enjoy for generations, and even after I'm gone, it'll still be sitting there, you know, which is kind of the cool thing. It's like a legacy. It'll you know be around."